thank you, everybody. So, well, I am impressed. So it is Friday on the conference. It is after the coffee break, and you actually came as volunteers to talk that is boring. Now, there may be some confusion. The restroom, if you have, want to have a nap, is over there. It was the one day before, at one door before. Yeah, why is a boring office talk? So, well, truth be told, a couple of years ago, I switched to the dark side. So I mostly do project management nowadays. And there, as you know, well, there's a lot of excellent PowerPoint involved. And so I'm on my little quest to automate that. So I looked for available modules because there are always, well, a couple of modules available in Python. And in this space, there are quite a lot. And what I would like to do is, first of all, well, motivate you while borrowing things can be interesting. And then to give you a, let's say, short introduction on what's available and how it could look like, hoping that you will then start to do your own, well, boring stuff with these modules and maybe with some insight from this talk. So motivation, some things should be boring. I like boring. So I don't have to think at all about the, well, equipment in this um, conference center. I don't have to think about the plumbing at all. It just works. Always when I have to think about the plumbing, there's a problem. So, and I would like to have the same situation for well, office files, because they are, to a certain extent, the plumbing in most organizations that I know. They get sent around, somebody looks at them, annotates them. So, well, a way to communicate. And I want to be, make this boring. I don't want to think, okay, I have to copy and paste a lot of um, files, a lot of images, a lot of pictures, a lot of PowerPoint slides at Friday, 8 p.m., just, um, just before I hopefully can go into the weekend. That's something that we should do automatically, which um, allows me to introduce my three characters. <coughs> They're totally, um, well, archetypes, so we have the boss, and the boss, as always, wants an Excel file, hopefully with nice numbers, but, well, in doubt, an Excel file with the right numbers have, will have to do. <laughs> Then we have, well, this little guy here. So he's working in an office, so he's the only one with a tie here, and he mostly works copy, pasting, combining, doing Excel files. So we'll learn what he does later. And he has one coworker, and his coworker is a Python knowing pragmatist. So maybe he studied physics, learned about Python, now started a job, and while he knows the, all the files that has to be produced, she knows how to automate it, well, and he knows that he wants the files. <coughs> and again, what do I hope to accomplish with this talk? I'll have to warn you, the um, code on these slides, if you compare it with what you've seen in this conference, it's not pretty. It's API code, and it's API code that is pretty closely aligned to how the um, file formats work. So you will see lots of calls that, well, enter some data, manipulate um, data, do highlighting. This is not something that is really exciting. It's just useful. Well, as the talk applied, it's boring. So, What you should get out of this talk is module names. There are a lot of different modules that are available. And a rough understanding how much effort you would need to invest to, say, have a nicely highlighted Excel file, have a PowerPoint with chart, have a PDF uh, file that looks like your um, PowerPoint file. And with that, you can maybe just convince people at your workplace to let you play with pandas, because you can do calculations in a repeatable way and then create some, let's say, business conformant files from that, that your boss can then take and add it around. So ultimately, what I want you to see and to do is when you maybe sit down on Monday, when you um, talk to somebody and say, okay, I could send you an Excel file, and where this, with a CSV file, you know, you always have to think on how to really open that. An Excel file is something that you know, and I can even do a PowerPoint for you. And that, once you have automated it, will be easy with Python. Mm -hmm. um, all the code, which is not much, is on GitHub. I will also, there's also the um, slides on GitHub right now. As soon as I have figured out how to upload the slides for the conference, you'll also have some there. So you can take this and hopefully, well, find something interesting. Um, Another word about the philosophy about how I do things for this talk. We have learned a lot about good and best practices in using Python. 
This is, um, I tend to follow, especially when I start more or less a quick and dirty approach. So if you think about automating things in your work, you may be, if you have a software engineering background, you may be tempted to think, okay, I will need um, a full testing framework, I will need to have this in Docker, and it should be a web application, and there are some extra parameters. Personally, for things like that, I would advise against this. What you're trying to do is just save you some work to get started, especially, this is a newbie talk, if you haven't done any large Python and programs before, I think this is a very good way to get started because you can do small things and then you can check whether they are correct. And this is the, well, basic idea. So what I do, for example, is just to, um, with exactly these APIs, is just combine some timesheets. So we have multiple consultants working on a project, so each has their timesheets, I basically copy them together and see whether the numbers fit, and then put output them in a different format. It is not especially challenging. It's, I think, 50 lines of code. The good thing is I don't have to think about what I've done every month. I just run the same script and things are pretty much okay. So what do we want to do? Basically, I have just three sub um, tasks in this talk. First of all, we have multiple Excel files. The Excel files here are stand-ins for any data you might accomplish. It might be a CSV file. You may read something from a database. You may have your little web crawler that um, checks pricing information on the internet. So you have multiple data sources that you want to combine. That's fine. Then you want to transform them a little bit and write them out to some other Excel file. Okay, so far so good. You can do all this with the, let's say, Pandas standard API. And then you want to make it somewhat prettier. Some highlighting, some specific Excel features that you or your organization might like. Then we go to the, I'll say, more presentation-focused stuff. We build some PowerPoints. And once we have the PowerPoints, we, well, we'll turn those into PDFs. And that's it. The interesting thing about this particular task is that there are many, many good tools available. So a personal favorite, I think of all, of, it's Pandas. It reads almost everything, it does almost all kinds of calculations, and it exports also quite a lot. It has a nice Excel export, for example. Then you have, with Excel Writer and OpenPixel, two API, uh, two modules that are very good at working with Excel files. This one, hence the name, um, can only write them. This is the one that we are going to use here, <coughs> mostly for, let's say, taste reasons. I like the RP API slightly better. Um, OpenPixel can also read Excel files, so you can read something in, change just a few numbers, write it out again. Um, for PDFs, we have PDF Read Write, which we just used to combine some um, PDFs. There is an a gigantic number of PDFs library available for Python, depending on what you want to do, so you'll probably need to invest some time. Um, what is quite nice, but quite big, if you want to do custom reporting is RapidLab. Again, something you won't see here, but just to give you a pointer, this is, well, if you want to do PDFs with Python and want them to be more complex than what you see here, that's fine. Um, I will use LibreOffice, basically in headless mode, to do some file conversations. And yeah, then we have um, Python PowerPoint, PBTX, <laughs> which, as the name suggests, does PBTX files. Okay, the overall um, structure is, if, if you look at the um, GitHub repo, it's just the main uh, method. So we read data, we do the Excel format, then we do um, some nice output, then we output the um, PowerPoints, and then we do the PDFs. So if you um, check out the codes, that should basically all work. It should have a couple of files. If not, let me know, in which case most likely something went wrong with the share up. Okay, what is our task? These are extremely made up and boring files. So the idea is we have um, some project team. This project team has expenses for materials, they want to build a, a, a mass station, and they have um, their working times. And, well, everybody has to be paid, so they have some expense per hour. 
So these are three files that you got maybe from your accounting department, maybe from your project team themselves, and now you want to combine them and do some reporting because you want to know what are actually my expenses. So first of all, you work with Pandas to load in all these files. So you have three data frames, and well, we don't really much to see here. So you read these Excel files. Each of these Excel files only has one worksheet. Okay, now you have your three data. Then you want to do something that you would normally done by copy-pasting in Excel. So if you work with Excel, um, well, we can do it. Who loves pivot tables in Excel? <coughs> okay, it's three or four people who uses pivot tables and have somewhat grumbling. Okay, so I will assume from that that you would enjoy to use Python slightly more. And Well, there is practically this pivot version. <coughs> so what we do is the same thing that we most likely do in an Excel file. And, um, if you can't follow this, I don't think that you should be concerned. Just know that everything that you could do in Excel, you could also do in Pandas. And thankfully, especially from the um, PyData people, there are a lot of very good um, Pandas tutorials available. So I'll just walk you through what we are doing here so that you see the AP is quite, well, beginner friendly. And the documentation is excellent. So whatever you want to do, I think you can Google to yourself to success. Okay, so what we basically want to do is we want to combine these two files. So we um, update. We just start from some um, starting and some end time. We calculate overall cost by rate. So we combine two. Uh, we combine the um, rate and the hours per um, day table. So it's basically this part here. Then we add some extra column just to say what um, cost type um, cost type that would be, and then we combine them. So this is, I think, a pretty standard copy and paste job. And as you can see, it's not so much code. So if you wrote this not for demonstration purposes, it's most likely the same code up here and back up here. So maybe 10 lines of code. So that's nice. We have the calculation. And the calculation is now copy and, and paste proof. You, if you have to, con um, have to do this multiple times, you can do it multiple times. You can even do it on a server. I think it's nicer than doing manual. So this is when we end up with. So we have the different cost positions. Where does it come from? Is it working time or are these expensive? Who is responsible for it? And we have, well, two projects, Team Dinner and Mass Colony. So it's two rather, well, let's say, ambitious things. And we want to output this to an Excel file. <coughs> so this is almost the um, Pandas standard way of doing it. So in Pandas, you can do two things. You can either go to Excel and write out a single Excel file, or you can initiate your own Excel writer. And the Excel writer will make it possible to have slightly more control. Particularly here, you will create, well, different um, worksheets. So these three worksheets all going to the writer, and you can give them a cheat name. And now you have, well, some control over your Excel, but it's basically still all data. So, well, I think it's not really management friendly quite now. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to have some introductionary um, sheet into our Excel. We want a company logo, a version number, and maybe some formatting. And to do this, you take a workbook um, object. You can get the workbook object from the writer object. And the workbook represents, well, basically your Excel sheet. And you can then define with Excel writer some formats. And there's a large number of different properties that you may want to use. In this particular case, I just want to say I want to sing in blue and slightly bold. This ends up here. So I have now created a new format, and now I write it. This zero, zero means row zero and um, line zero. <coughs> the API also has this um, Excel-specific um, coordinate. So if you want to go A1, is it where you can also do this? I write my text, and bold in this case is this um, format object. So I write this out. I can also go unformatted, so this overall cost thing is here. 
and I can play around a little bit with the column width. So set column takes which column um, it should apply to. So first column to first column. We could also go multiple columns. And it um, says how, which width what do I want to have in terms of um, characters. And I'll write this out. So I have my first formatting. And I can include an image. Well, and I can include typos, but that's another thing. OK, so what we have done so far, we have output an Excel straight from Pandas. And we have created a new cheat into, in this Excel. OK. But, well, what do we want to do if we need slightly more control? So for example, if my data is not in a Pandas data set, or if I have some other data that I want Mike to add in an arbitrary position. There you have two methods. We see the first one here. Well, you have multiple, but you can write whole rows into the system. So what we do here is just we take our columns, add them here, so we have a header, and then we add the raw information in the different rows. So now I have control over how to update this. So if you have something in a dict or wherever you get it from, you don't need to well, assume that you do an export just from Pandas. Now, this still looked rather drab. So where we want to end up is something a little bit nicer. So what you, you see here is more manual control over what you do. So first of all, <coughs> we build a new worksheet. And then we add two formats this time. And you see the different properties that are available. Think bold, we already used. We have different font sizes and different colors. <coughs> then we want to um, write the column information out. Again, we apply one of these font information, one of these styles. And then the next thing that we want to do is to um, change the column widths again. So this happens here. And then we want to write out our data. And this time, we do it really data element by data element. So we don't use um, the raw function, but just go over all our data. And what we want to accomplish is we want to change everything that is higher than the 75th percentile in the data in red. So we just use pandas to get this particular value. And then we go over every row in our data. We look which column we are, because the first column is data, uh, is a number, the rest is text. And if we are above the um, percentile value, we just apply red bold, so it's the other style that we defined. And then it looks like this. So it gets slightly more, well, interesting. So you don't have these desert of numbers anymore, but you can highlight numbers that are of specific interest. Now, those of you who like Excel too much, like me, um, might notice, OK, but there are conditional formats in Excel. So I could just, if I do this by hand, I could do all that in Excel. And in terms of highlighting, I could maybe do it in, as a table. And this is also possible. So you can just say, OK, I want specific number formats like Excel wants them, and define those. And I can um, define part of my Excel sheet as a table. So, five? Questions. Okay. So, in order to do that, you just <coughs> go for this data, and then what you can also do is say, I want conditional highlighting. Conditional highlighting, if you know in Excel you work, you can define custom rules. And there are quite a lot of complicated properties that you can use, but my old time favorite is just this three color scale, so it gave, basically gives you a traffic light. And you can apply those, again, to a specific part in your spreadsheet. In this case, it's the same part that we used for um, the table. And you have a nice colorful Excel sheet. OK. We'll have to speed up a little bit, so I'll just be slow. You can also create charts. Charts are the most ugly part in the API, and mostly because of this part here. Because what you do is just here you add all the data to the table. You need the data on the Excel sheet in order to create a chart. Excel needs to find them somewhere. And then you create two series. Each series has a name. In this case, it could be, um, well, the expense information. It has a category that the person who is responsible for, um, <coughs> for the price. And, well, 
once you have this, you can just create a chart. You could also go for modplotlib at this moment. So let's say we already saw earlier that we could use pictures. Yes, you could. The advantage of this one is that it is um, an Excel chart, so it's editable. You can change it. OK, so much for Excel. Now we'll get, just go over the PowerPoint thing. Um, the PowerPoint module, as a thing, is wonderful. So basically everything you can do by hand, you can do with a module. For Excel, there are still some limitations, so I didn't find a way to do pivot tables in the format that Excel expects them. So the thing about PowerPoint is one um, difference. You um, should probably prepare some templates that you want to change because you have a lot of formatting information that is will not necessarily be required for the Excel file. And then you can just go and fill out placeholders and write out, well, ugly tables. In this case, on purpose, that you see that I did something myself. So I said, I'm not a, well, I'm not a designer. And same thing, you can add pictures to it. You can add tables to it. Here you will see that we use this module pandas to PowerPoint. It's um, not pip installable, but you'll find it on GitHub. It's a couple of hundred lines. And again, you can add charts. It's basically, uh, well, the RP is close to it. There are a lot of magic numbers in here, and you're probably best off starting to copy the code and then change it. So it's not the nicest code, but it is useful. So you uh, want, again, get a native PowerPoint object. One of the things I didn't figure out so far is how to take the charts out of my Excel into my PowerPoint, like I would do with copy and pasting. If anybody has a hint there, that would be helpful. Okay, now we have also the PowerPoint. If you want to change this into a PDF, you need something that's able to, change, uh, to render PowerPoints. I didn't find a Python module to do that. Luckily, there is LibreOffice, and LibreOffice has a command line mode. So what we can do is just automate the command line mode. Some of you may be familiar with subprocess, so what we do here is just build a command line, look for the executable, add some options, these are, ones, are the ones that are interesting, and then, well, execute it. And at least on the Mac, um, the version that comes out of the PowerPoint and the version that isn't the PDF look 90% the same. So that's, that's quite practical. What you can also do, this is um, PDF read write, is just read an existing um, PDF file. So let's say you have a title page, an outro, and some pages that you built. So you could just read those in. And then you create a PDF writer. And then you can just say, take this page, add it to the output, take this page, add it to the output, and many things more. OK. And that's basically all we've done. So we have now seen that it is possible to create nice-looking Excel files. Some people like those. We have seen that it is possible to create um, PowerPoint slides. So my personal dream scenario is that in some kind in the future, I will be able to create um, gun charts from Excel files. That would be great. So you're working on that. And you can even create, um, create PDFs for archiving or whatever you want to do from those files. There are some things that you can look into learn more, um, especially if you are new with Python. This book is nice. It's nicely written, and um, the HTML version is free. If you um, want to deep di uh, have a deep dive into the wonderful world of PDFs, then you could also do this um, on the Webot Lab page. I think this is the um, sign that I should sh um, shut up now. Yeah, and the documentation for each of these uh, modules is excellent. I mean, even excellent. So the people who did, did those modules, it's, it's almost heroic. It's not really the nicest work to do that, but they did it really well. Okay, and that's it. Honestly, honestly, no. Uh, so 
I, I think what you'd like to think, you can do it via com. Um, I think there's also now a product, I think it's Excel Wings, where you basically embed Python into Excel. Those is also available for the Mac. And the reason that I did this the way that I did is that I just wanted to have a script that runs without opening Excel, because it, for me, that makes the debugging so much easier. Pivot tables will be preserved in OpenPixel. So if you have existing complex Excel files with lots of pivot tables, and you just want to change the data, use OpenPixel. Yes. Um, there are some things that you have to keep in mind. So they, it changes the, um, the file. This, for example, means that if you have some computations in the file that Excel would trigger automatically once you have, for example, included a pivot table, you will need to trigger in Excel again. So you cannot um, assume that everything that would happen in Excel will also happen, happen if you create the file outside of Excel. That makes things well. You can. Yeah, you can. The question is, um, does Excel do it? So with OpenPixel, yeah, you can change the data. And you can, you can force the pivot tables to update. OK. And you should be able to copy and paste a Excel chart into pivot, into okay. PowerPoint. OK, in this case, we can talk about this, because this will be extremely interesting. It's so, not directly possible, but you should be able to take the spreadsheet drawing, uh, dump the XML, and okay. attach it into a PowerPoint file. It's not that difficult. OK, uh, that's slightly lower level than, well, I went with this. If you want to work with templates, it's, it's, it should all be doable. OK. I'm the open pixel maintainer, so okay. I know this stuff. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Sorry. Uh, someone here had a question? Yeah. It was, was basically also the same question about how to interact it with an open instance of Excel or PowerPoint. And yes, there is this uh, open uh, uh, Excel Wings, um, which does this for Excel. And you always can do it via COM, but that's quite cumbersome. I'm not aware of anything which can do the same with PowerPoint, for example. And if someone knows something, just talk to me. Um, have you have any experience with, with Word um, and templates? And if you put text in it, if uh, the text is holding uh, the template styles and also the, the, the talk? From heading, have you some experience with it that it, that it works well with Python? Sorry, hardly did any work or anything with word files. Okay, uh, I want to thank you again, Stefan, for a good talk. Thank you.